Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and I'm just so excited that you would take this time to join us for our First Five this morning. Every day, my goal is to help you get your day off to a great start by spending some time digging into the Word of God and by being together in prayer. And so, if you have joined us before, you know that every day, every morning, we try to read together one chapter of Scripture. And we have recently been working our way through the Gospel of Luke. So we're kind of right in the middle of it, right in the heart of it right now. We are in Luke chapter 10. And so my hope would be that when we're all done this morning, you take a moment and read the whole of Luke chapter 10. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 25 through 29. So if you have a Bible handy or you want to pull it up on your phone app, I would invite you to join me in Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Generally, when we read this story, we focus on the second half. Right? This is the story of the Good Samaritan. And you may very well have heard it. The story goes that there was a Jewish man who was traveling on the road between Jerusalem and Jericho. And along the way, he was accosted by robbers. He was beaten and left for dead. Well, within a few moments perhaps, or a little while, a priest, another Jewish man, leader of the synagogue, walked by but skirted around the injured man and walked on the other side of the road. A little bit later, a Levite, another part of the Jewish faith, another man of the Jewish faith, a kinsman of this man, walks by and avoids him again. And then eventually a third man comes by and that man is a Samaritan. The Samaritans were considered to be the mortal enemies of the Jews. And yet the Samaritan stops, and he helps him. And he bandages his wounds, and he puts him on his own horse, and he takes him to the nearest town where he can get a room for him at an inn and have someone there take care of him while he continues on his business trip. And so, this is a great story with an important moral. But I want us today to look at the introduction to the story. Because it starts out, an expert in the law asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And what does the law say? Jesus replies. To which the man answers, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength with all your mind and with all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. <sighs> Jesus is impressed with the man's answers. He has answered wisely. And if you stop and think about it, this is actually an incredibly insightful answer from this man. Because remember, this man is an expert in the law. right? The Jews had over 600 laws and commandments. This man could very well have just begun rattling off various other commandments that were part of the Jewish law that the Jews were expected to live by around the Sabbath or their offerings or uh, you know ceremonial cleansing. Whatever. There's all kinds of laws that he could have referenced but instead he just narrows it down to this. Just as Jesus had done in another passage, he says, 
love God and love your neighbor. Now, of course, in the story, he tries to qualify himself. Now he sounds like an expert in the law. But who is my neighbor? He asks. So Jesus then tells him the parable of the Good Samaritan. And the, and the ultimate lesson of the parable when he says, who was the good neighbor to this man? It was the one who was not his countryman. It was the one from far off, one who would even been considered a mortal enemy. Uh, in other words, everyone is our neighbor. And so if we are to love our neighbor and everyone is our neighbor, then that means that we are ultimately to love everyone. So the gospel is really very simple. It is something we say at Rock Church all the time. It's even on my mug. Love God. Love others. And then we just kind of throw in there at the end. And do good. I think we often overcomplicate our Christian faith. If we can start with this simple foundation of love, we are already living out Christ's calling and desire for us. Love God and love others. So, as you go about your day today, find time to express love to God in your prayers, perhaps in a worship song that you sing along with on the radio. Let Him know that you love Him and find an opportunity to love others, to bless someone else, to express the love of Christ to them. Because in so doing, we have fulfilled Christ's true desire for us. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, the story of the Good Samaritan is certainly a great and powerful story, but what I find interesting today is how we got there. The introduction of this story that talks about what it really means to find eternal life. It is to love God and to love our neighbor. Help us, Lord, to live as people of love. Help us to love you and to love others around us. And so, if we are able to do that, I believe we are fulfilling Christ's greatest desire for us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.